In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmose the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the Bell Tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I know that name. Lord Cox said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Revelio. Interesting. But not Grimble to weft. All students introduce themselves to this hero. Searching for Grimble to weft. For some of the most important work done in the Goblin Rebellion. Accio! This is a centuries old likeness of Pangadon. Fearless mouse hunter and devoted study companion. People have always loved him. I find that comfortable. He never strays from the bell tower entrance hall. There, students with a thirst for knowledge. Revelio. Alohomora. Rebellion. Abandoning class to one who is in keeping with Professor Bin. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir F. Buttle. 
He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal knights, or rather, Rebellion. statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen eyed students will spot the statue of Sir Athbuddle of the cheerful countenance held among the ranks. His fame was not won by vanquishing foes in single combat, nor by slaying bloodthirsty dragons. Sir Skaggledorf the Heedless? These bits of rumor are all that's left of a witch called Selene Wartnobby. Rumor has it, she was, was celebrated by her old friends and Rebellion. Chunk. I encourage everyone Perhaps to make the waving statues I suppose acquainted. we'll never know. Hogwarts founders could never have achieved such architectural majesty. They powerful magic. There's nothing quite so magical as history. Dusty and beautiful history. In all the centuries that Hogwarts has existed, not once has it collapsed. Our students often complain about the many staircases at Hogwarts, sir, uh, but they never bother me. Revelio. This unassuming smudge is rumored to be the location of the very first successful use of Bombarda. I suppose successful in relative terms, since whoever cast it didn't live. Hogwarts is to the inexorable march of time. Where can I find that friendly knight you mentioned earlier? Oh yes, Sir Athpuddle, or rather the statue of Sir Athpuddle. It can be found amongst the other statues of knights. It's easy to identify, as it's been enchanted to wave at those who take the time to seek it out. There's nothing quite so magical as... Wagadu's history is, well, a... Leave it to bins to make the most interesting school in the world. If you fail in history of magic, you're doomed to repeat it. <laughs> the class, that is. At least we're out of the classroom. Revelio. Professor Bins, I found the statue of Sir Athpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Athpuddle's affability was his undoing died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. 
But imagine how dull my lectures would be without Goblin Rebellions to discuss. Hmm, history does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say.